Hey everyone, my name is Lana Q, and in this video I'm going to show you how to play every single Crash Bandicoot game on PC. Well, almost all of them. Before we begin, I want to make a few things clear. This video will cover most of the Crash games except the mobile games and Crash Team Rumble. At the time of this video's release, there is no Switch or PC port of the game. However, if you are watching this video months or years later, this might have changed. Either way, I will slightly talk about the game at the end of the video. Secondly, this video won't show you how to obtain these games legally or illegally. That's all up to you. I personally don't give a crap if people pirate games or not, but it's nothing I can promote on YouTube. Also, this video will mainly focus on the US slash NTSC releases of these games, as they are the versions that receive the most support from people in the emulation community. This video will also expect you to have some form of knowledge of how emulators work. In case you don't, I will link guides to each emulator I will talk about in this video, which is the Duck Station emulator, the Dolphin emulator, the PCSX2 emulator, the MGBA emulator, the Melon DS emulator, and the Yuzu and the Ryu Jinx emulator. And finally, I want to state that as a human being, I can make mistakes. So if you see a mistake made in this video, aside from me not being able to grow facial hair for some reason, then please tell me in the comments. With all of this out of the way, let's get started. Timestamps for each of the games will be down where the video player is, however, I highly recommend watching the entire video. With all of this said, let's begin with the PlayStation 1 Crash Bandicoot games. For the PlayStation 1 Crash Bandicoot games, the emulator Duck Station is the main one you want to use. You can technically play the original Crash Trilogy in widescreen and even some of them at 60fps, but they really weren't designed for that and have a lot of pop-in and speed issues that I personally haven't been able to fix. That is why I recommend playing the games in their original 4x3 aspect ratio at 30fps. These are personally the settings I use. And Duck Station does allow for per game settings, so this won't overlap with your other games. However, for Crash Team Racing and Crash Bash, it's a bit of a different story, as playing these games in widescreen is actually for the most part just fine and has no major issues. In order to play these games in a proper widescreen, make sure to set your aspect ratio to 16x9. Secondly, you want to open both games one at a time and enable the widescreen cheat code as shown on screen right now. Restart or quit out of the games and it should work. The best version of Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex there is, is the Greatest Hits PS2 version on PCSX2. You might have heard that the PS2 version of this game has really bad load times, but that isn't the whole truth. While yes, the original PS2 version has really bad load times, the game got a Greatest Hits re-release years later, which fixed the long loading screens. It's still technically the slowest out of all the systems, but not by much. It's also the best version available on PC. The GameCube version has massive slowdowns sometimes, and the Xbox version, apart from being more demanding to emulate, doesn't have any form of widescreen mode whatsoever. Plus, I don't think everyone is a big fan of the realistic fur that they implemented in the Xbox version. In order to play the game in widescreen, make sure to set the aspect ratio for the game at 16x9, and while there, make sure to enable widescreen patches as well. Secondly, you want to right-click on the game and click on Properties, and then go to the Patches tab and enable the widescreen patch. It should already be enabled when you enable the widescreen patches, but in case it isn't, enable it. You also want to enable all the other patches that fix graphical issues that exist in the game. There is obviously going to be some weird graphical issues here and there, since the game wasn't made for widescreen, but other than that, it plays pretty well, actually and it's definitely the best version out there on PC right now. There's really not much to choose when it comes to Twin Sanity. It's either the PS2 port or the Xbox port, and today we will choose the PS2 port. Just like with Wrath of Cortex, make sure to enable the widescreen patch before playing. The game does have a widescreen option in the game, but every time you boot up the game, it always disables itself, and this code changes it so it's always enabled instead. However, we're not done with Twin Sanity just yet, as the game actually has a fan-made HD texture pack made for it, made by Reverie Pass. The link to the texture pack will be in the description down below. 
In order to enable it, make sure to download it, extract it out of its archive file format, which for most people who frequently use a PC, will either be WinRAR or 7-Zip. In case you don't have any of them, make sure to download one of them first. After you've extracted the textures to a folder, inside that folder should be another folder called SLUS20909. This is the game's US game ID. You want to take this folder and drag it to the textures folder in your PCSX2 directory. If you don't know where it is or how to find it, go into PCSX2 and go to the Tools tab and you'll see Open Data Directory and bam, there it is. And now drag the folder that is named after the game's ID into the textures folder. The final thing you want to do is go over to the graphics settings and then go to the texture replacement tab and then you want to tag these three boxes. These are the settings I use and from my experience they will make these new custom textures load correctly. If you did everything correctly, you should see that some textures are in higher quality. And you should be done from there and the game should show off high quality textures for the most part. I'm not sure if the texture pack is complete or not, but for the most part it looks pretty good from what I've seen. The best version of Crash Nitro Kart there is, is the GameCube version being played on the Dolphin emulator. The reason we are going with the GameCube version is because it seems to bring the best and most stable performance to the table. And Xbox emulation isn't really perfect either. The game has a widescreen gecko code that you can enable by copying the specific code in the description of this video, right click on the game and clicking on properties. Go over to the gecko codes tab and click on add code. Paste in the code, give it a name of your choosing, and you should be done. The best version of Crash Tag Team Racing there is, is the PS2 version being played on PCSX2. The PSP version does have exclusive content, but it's not really worth it considering how insignificant it is and the improvements we can make with the PS2 version. The game has two patches you can enable one being the widescreen code and the other being a 60fps code. In order to get the 60fps code to work properly, you need to right click on the game and then click on properties. Then you have to go to the emulation tab and set the PS2 overclock to 180%. Now don't worry, we're not going to overclock your actual computer CPU, but the emulated PS2 one instead. This shouldn't be too taxing on your computer, but if you do notice that your computer starts to lag while playing the game, then you might want to drag the overclocking back to 100 and playing the game in 30 FPS instead. For reference, these are my specs and it works totally fine for me, so if you have similar specs to me or even better, then you're good. Dolphin, I love ya. Per game settings, can't wait to see it. Oh, Richard! <laughs> Honestly, not much to say when it comes to the GBA games. If you want to play them, then make sure to play them on the MGBA emulator, and yeah, that's it. Here are the settings I personally use, and yeah. I don't know, what, a burger or something? For the DS games, the best emulator for the job is Melon DS, and just like MGBA, it's extremely simple to set up. Here are the settings I use. In order to use the touchscreen, you have to use your mouse. To my knowledge, there's no current way of using your controller on the touchscreen. Though, it's not as bad as it sounds and you can get used to it after some time. The best version of Crash of the Titans there is on PC is the PS2 version being played on PCSX2. You can play the Xbox 360 version on Senia, however it suffers from annoying audio delay and there's currently no way to fix it. If you're watching this video a year or years later, this might have been fixed, but from what it is right now, it is still a problem. And playing the game on Senia Canary isn't much better as the game won't even start properly by throwing you into an almost infinite loading screen every time the game has to load something new. So yeah, the best version on PC right now is the PS2 version. The game has two patches made for it. 
The first one being the widescreen mode, which Crash of the Titans already has, but just like Crash to Insanity, it disables every time you quit the game, and this code automatically enables it every time you start the game up. And the second code is for playing the game at 60 FPS, and just like Crash Tag Team Racing, you will need to increase the console's emulated overclock in order for this to work, this time to 130%. Just like with Crash Tag Team Racing, in order to get the 60 FPS code to work properly, you need to right click on the game and click on properties, then you have to go to the emulation tab and set the emulated PS2 overclock to 130%. As I said earlier in the video, we're not overclocking your actual computer CPU, but the emulated PS2 one. It shouldn't be too taxing, but if you notice that your computer starts to lag, then you might want to drag the overclocking back to 100 and playing it in 30 FPS instead. And then you should be done, and the game should be running pretty well with little to no issues. The best version of Mind Over Moon out there is the PS2 version played on PCSX2. Just like Crash of the Titans before it, the game is playable on Senia but suffers from annoying audio delay. And the same thing goes with the Senia Canary version. So just like with Titans, we will go with the PS2 version as well. The game has three codes this time around. One for automatically enabling the widescreen code, just like with Titans, and one for automatically enabling the game's progressive scan, as it seems to disable itself every time you quit the game, and a code to play the game in 60 FPS. No PS2 overclocking needed this time. However, if you do see frame drops here and there, then trying it out and setting it to 130%, like with Titans, shouldn't be that bad. The best version of Crash Bandicoot The Insane Trilogy there is, is of course the PC Steam version as it seems to be the only version available right now. I mean, I guess you could emulate the Switch version, but I mean, why in this case? Anyways, not much to talk about here. The game should run pretty well on its own, as long as you have either the minimum or recommended hardware specs on the Steam page. The best and currently only version of Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel there is on PC right now is the Nintendo Switch version being emulated on the Nintendo Switch emulators Yuzu or Ryu Jinx. Before we start however, make sure to have the game and its most recent patch. Yuzu for the longest time wasn't the best option due to the Vulcan driver being broken in the game for people with non-RTX graphics cards, and the OpenGL drivers having bad slowdowns. However, Yuzu was recently updated and one of its fixes was fixing the Vulcan driver for the game. So now you can play the game just fine on Vulcan with only minor graphical corruptions here and there. However, if you still have issues on Yuzu, try playing the game on Ryu Jinx instead. Anyways, the Switch version of Crash Team Racing Nitro Field, god I hate that name, has a 60fps mod and an unlock everything cheat available on the Yuzu website. The link to both mods will be down in the description down below. Just scroll a tiny bit down and you'll see the game's name with the two mods there. Download the mods, extract it out of its file archive folder which for most people will either be WinRoy or 7-Zip, right click on the game in your library, click on open mod data location or for Riot Jinx mods directory, copy or move the mod folder to the mod data folder and the mod should be enabled by default. Right click on the game and click on properties to check if the mod is there. If you don't see it, try restarting the emulator and see if it's on the list. With Ryu Jinx, right click on the game and open up cheats to see if the cheats mod was installed correctly. If you see the cheats there then it worked and if you don't see it then it didn't work. The reason we want this unlock everything mod in the first place is because you can only unlock skins and characters in the game by connecting to the game's servers, which you obviously can't do on an emulator. If you did all of this correctly, which trust me, I know this is very complicated, it was very complicated for me too when I first did all this, the game should run at 60 FPS and everything in the game should be unlocked. The best version of Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time is of course the game's official PC port, which is available on Steam and on the Blizzard launcher. 
Not much to say here, as long as you have the minimum or recommended specs shown on the game's Steam page, then you should be good. At the time of this video's release, Crash Team Rumble doesn't have any form of Switch or PC port that lets you play the game on your PC. And even then, currently, there's not much reason to play the game on PC, as the game is an online-only game, and obviously you can't connect to the game's servers while using an emulator. So, yeah, sorry to say, there is no current way of playing Crash Team Rumble on PC. I mean, you could just play Crash Bash, or God forbid Crash Boom Bang, but we don't talk about that here. You're ugly, you're disgusting, I'm gonna kill you, give me $200. And that was every single Crash Bandicoot game that you can play on PC right now. I hope that this video has helped you out or at the very least entertained you in some way or another. If it did, then a like and a comment would be very nice and appreciated. If you want to know how to play every single Spyro game on PC as well, then you are in luck as I have made a video on that as well. If you are a fan of both Crash Bandicoot and Spyro the Dragon, then make sure to check out my channel. This is my first Crash video as of now, but I've got plenty of Spiral videos up on the channel ready to watch. Thank you for watching this video. I wish you not only a good day, but a happy holidays as well. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys next time. See ya.